A sixth matter is how will you resolve disputes? Simple thing. To agree on a dispute resolution mechanism. We cover this and some of the practicalities of, of it on our in our course uh, on Islamic marriage at Seeker's Guidance. Then agree on a dispute resolution mechanism. Because you will fight. You will fight. How will you fight? Set some terms for the fight. Right? Um, yeah. Um, so agree on a dispute resolution mechanism. What what is the basis on which you will resolve things? Even, you know, and that idea of you know, people will shed the cloak of dignity, the cloak of religion, the cloak of reason. Say, so, but he's so religious. The number of times some someone, male or female, in dispute will pay no attention to the limits of Allah and His Messenger, legal or moral or of conduct. It's not surprising because underlying everything, you're just an animal. That is your, that is your lower self. Inna nafsa la bisu. Truly, the lower self is ever commanding to ill. That's that's our era. Except those who Allah has mercy on, that they will choose religion, choose reason. Also, who will do you agree to someone to be a recourse for? Resolving things. Jack and Jill may, be, may have parents who would be conducive to the two parties resolving things. And sometimes it's a very good thing. But in some situation, it's like adding fuel to the fire. That you know, you're making kebab and the fuel is getting too strong. So what do you decide to do? You decide to pour oil on the fuel. It won't solve things. It will make things worse. Um, some of the suggested steps on how to resolve disputes. So this is outside the scope here, but in the Islamic marriage course, for example, I think lessons 10 and 11, we look at some of these dispute resolution mechanisms, how they agree to talk to each other when they dispute. What will be the criteria by which they'll resolve dispute? In What will they do in the event of divorce? How will they handle, especially if there's children involved, etc., how will they handle issues of child custody, this and that? But they can at least morally agree that we agree to handle these. That how do you handle the interface between the rulings of the Sharia on the one side, but also how does that interplace with custody laws? And custody laws, depending on where you are, can be very messy. Okay? But having some agreement on these is of, of merit. There's many other things you can agree upon. Right? You can agree on pretty much anything. Right? Some are frivolous and some can't be binding. If, the, if they agree that we agree that we will only wear white or black. Is this a matter of significance? No. So that is considered a frivolous promise. Right? Now you should, if you break it, you should just make tawbah. That's astaghfirullah, we did something <laughs> foolish. Maybe give a little bit of money in charity, just yes, token amount, just you know, for you know, but you're not bound by the, the purely frivolous. There's you know, uh, clothing is not only black and white, but sometimes people agree to very strange things. So, you you know, I won't mention what, alhamdulillah, my wife doesn't remember. We'd agreed to some pretty strange things in our marriage agreement. We'd been reading some very strange books <laughs> when we got married, so. Alhamdulillah, selective memory is a good thing in life. So we sort of redrafted the terms of our marriage agreement before any trouble would happen. I'm lazy, so I sit thinking for too long. So part of getting the food blender also got rid of some of those secondary uh, commitments that were uh, not binding, or which are not tenable. So those are some of the things that we wanted to highlight, that if you can have that in writing, and, and this is separate from the marriage agreements. You have a marriage, con you have a marriage contract, and you sign on to that, you have a marriage agreement, and you sign on to that, and you keep both.
Rasulullah